Has Denzel Washington finally had enough of Hollywood's obsession with woke culture? In a world where celebrities are quick to jump on the latest social trend, Denzel is refusing to follow the script and it's making waves. Who, who, you, wound up, who you wound up supporting in the election? Presidential election. But is there a price to pay for speaking the truth in an industry where going against the grain could cost you everything? And what did he say about Kamala Harris that has everyone talking? Keep watching because what Denzel reveals may change the way you see Hollywood forever. So why did he need a uh, black director? Could a white director not have? It's not color. It's culture. Explain the difference, because I think we're, we're Steven in a space Spiel We all know Denzel Washington isn't one to back down from a challenge. Denzel's statement, it's not about color, it's about culture sparked a debate that's rattled Hollywood. Many are trying to deal with the fallout, but the truth is, Denzel isn't trying to change who he is. This isn't just about one comment, it's about a man who's had enough of the growing trend of woke ideology spreading through Hollywood like wildfire. Could a white director not have... It's not color, it's culture. Explain the difference, because I think we're, we're Steven in a space Spielberg right now. did Schindler's List. Mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese did Goodfellas, right? Steven Spielberg could direct Goodfellas. Martin Scorsese probably could have done a good job with Schindler's List, but they're cultural differences. Yeah. I know, you know, we all know what it is when a hot comb hits your hair on a Sunday morning, mm -hmm. what it smells like. Huh? That's a cultural difference. Not just the color difference. Right. So it's the culture. So you, don't know, cool. you don't know nothing about huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> see, see how everybody laughed? That's a cultural difference. That's not a race difference. That's just that most. That's all I got. Isn't it interesting that in a society where we're supposed to have the freedom to express ourselves, someone like Denzel feels the need to call out the industry's issues? Why would a respected actor with such a long-standing career feel the urge to speak up? Maybe he's reached a point of exhaustion, tired of seeing the entertainment world dominated by a single narrative. Woke culture has seeped far beyond movies and TV shows. It's found its way into talk shows like The View and even political conversations. Denzel's absence from platforms like The View speaks volumes about his disagreement with the prevailing woke narrative. He has said some things about Kamala Harris, who is one of the leaders of this movement, and because of this, people have been wondering whether Hollywood is blacklisting him for daring to speak out. Is this the land of the free, or are we slowly choking freedom of speech? It seems Denzel is standing firm, refusing to back down. His stance reminds us that the freedom to think and speak for ourselves is something worth fighting for. Uh, right now, under President Obama, over the last eight years, in your mind, has race, have race, relations improved under his leadership? I, you know, race relationships have to do with race relationships. You're white or whatever you are. I'm black or whatever I am. We're standing here talking now. That's how we get things done. You can't legislate love. The President of the United States can't legislate us into liking each other. We have to step forward and ask questions about each other and engage. There's no law that says, oh, because I'm President, you all got to get along now. So it's up to us. And there's been so many protests in America, especially during the election. Black Lives Matter movement, for example, and those issues. Have, has that movement in particular, the Black Lives Matter movement, helped race relations or not in America? Well, in listen, we live in America. And in America, we have the freedom to express ourselves. We shouldn't take that for granted. So whatever the movements are, whether you agree with them or don't, they have the right to express themselves. So that's one of the great things about being in this country, that you do have the right to protest. Denzel Washington has something to say about Hollywood's race obsession, and it may not be exactly what some people expect. He's not only discussing race, he is addressing the culture being fostered within the sector, and it is not very complimentary. Denzel said that he feels that Hollywood is now more interested in appearance such as skin color and gender and not talent and integrity. This perspective has placed him on the opposite side of an industry that appears more concerned with keeping up appearances and painting a politically correct picture than with encouraging creativity. Therefore, what does it take to be countercultural to the woke culture dominating the Hollywood film industry today? To Denzel, it is about denying the concept of discrimination or glorification of an individual on aspects of color or gender. Instead, he's calling for a change to values such as work ethic, honesty, and personal traits which are much more profound than race or origin. And, and if there's one thing we know about Denzel, it's that he's never stopped stepping out of the box. It's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes 
with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up, Google little yummy. Mm. Little yummy was an 11 year old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the headshot of him. He's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14 year old. Wow. Who's doing life now and a 16 year old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Yeah. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. You know, that, 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 the, like I, I did talk about my three closest friends, and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together. But I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example, yeah. and they didn't. We can blame the system if we want, but they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. We were all doing enough to get locked up at 13. My parents sent me in another direction. They didn't have any- For many years now, Denzel has been among the most vocal actors against the norm in the Hollywood industry. He has always believed in free will and personal initiative, which is quite opposite to the victim culture that has emerged in the wake of Wokiv. However, it is one thing to raise your voice and quite another to try to counteract that trend. And Denzel has done just that. He has made a point of going against the grain in the industry and is now seen as a muse in this male world that is otherwise so rigid and focused on aesthetics. But in a society now where it's just first, who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it, sell it. Fighting for a cause is not an easy thing to do, especially in Hollywood. The industry is famous for crucifying anyone who does not conform to the unwritten code. It's already being said that Denzel's stand might be the reason he will not get more jobs in the future. Yet, principles are the foundation of Denzel's career, and he'd rather go against the odds if that means staying true to himself. Black Lives Matter movement, for example, and those issues, have, has that movement in particular, the Black Lives Matter movement, helped race relations or not in America? Well, in listen. We live in America, and in America we have the freedom to express ourselves. We shouldn't take that for granted. So whatever the movements are, whether you agree with them or don't, they have them. Denzel Washington is perhaps famous for many things other than his acting prowess, but his politics are quite something. While he is appreciated for endorsing Barack Obama, he seems to be half-hearted towards Kamala Harris. In the previous elections of 2008 and 2012, Denzel supported Obama publicly, and that had a major contribution to Obama's success. He was inspired by Obama's elegance and power. But when it comes to Kamala Harris, Denzel's support is surprisingly low-key. Denzel has long had an attitude to the media and once stated, if you do not read the newspaper, you are ignorant. If you do, then you are not well informed. There's been a lot of buzz about this fake news. You were the subject of a fake news story. Oh yeah, what they say? I was running for president. No, no, no I voted. No, what they say? You switched your support. I switched, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean? If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Hmm. So what do you do? That's a great question. <laughs> what is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore. So what a responsibility you all have to, be, to tell the truth, not just to be first, but to tell the truth. We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. Anything you practice, you'll get good at, Inclu including BS. <laughs> he is also worried by the rate at which fake news circulates, particularly on social media platforms. He said this in an interview in 2016 while emphasizing fake news, stating that it is always better to be right than first. Long-term effect of too much information. The polarization of the electorate, a meter spiritness. And uh, false information as well, because the, the, of, the whole fake news pick thing. One, pick one. It's not just one. That's the flavor of the day. Every day is something else. People have to understand, are you using your device or is your device using you? Can you put it down? Can you turn it off? You're talking about literally the places people All get their information, information from. I don't care what, what information. Pick one. Phone, television, you know. It used to be news. Now it's opinions. Oh, glasses. We have three experts on the right, three on the left. Let's discuss. Ooh, light bulbs. We have three experts on the right. That's not news. That's opinion news. Well, over and over and over. Cycle, 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 cycle. What is the long-term effect of too much information? If you're sitting there and you're thinking it's the gospel, what I'm saying to people is, to all of us, 
I'm not knocking the phone. What I'm saying is we have to understand, we have to at least ask ourselves around the world, you here in England, wherever you are, what is it doing to us? He has also emphasized that social media is just a tool, a reflection of our free will, and warned that while we all seek approval, many now do so from millions of strangers online. Turn it off, that's what I would say. It's, it's, it's hard for young people now because they're hooked, they're addicted. If you don't think you're addicted, and I'm talking about anyone, from the highest to the lowest. If you don't think you're addicted, then see if you can turn it off for a week. It got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it get real quiet? It's a tool, so we should use it. God has blessed us with free will. Now it's free will magnified, free will on steroids. You're free to go in any direction you want. It will allow you, and it's not the enemy. It's just a, ma it's, it's just a reflection of our own free will. You know? and, and we all want to be liked. But now we want to be liked by 16 million. And will now some of us do anything to be liked? We, we used to do anything to be liked, but it was the, by the person in front of you. Now it's to be liked by 16 million people that you don't know. We have to ask ourselves, what is the long-term, if not too, the short-term effect of too much information. In 2024, Denzel is also critical of the woke agenda, particularly how it is affecting the youth. He believes many are trapped in this culture, seeing it as a spiritual battle. According to Denzel, without a strong spiritual foundation, people risk falling into despair, much like how he perceives Kamala Harris's media-driven public persona. To Denzel Washington, the line between Hollywood and politics is getting blurry with the same forces pushing the woke agenda in both areas. For him, the woke movement isn't really about promoting diversity but about controlling the narrative. Anyone who dares to question it is seen as a threat. Despite the backlash he's faced for his comments about Kamala Harris, Denzel isn't backing down. He's made it clear that he won't be silenced by the woke crowd. You better learn to unite. I think we as Americans need to put our elected officials' feet to the fire and demand that they work together or they won't get back in office. You know, in this age we live in, this accelerated information age, we're getting further and further apart. We're not getting together, we're getting further and further and further apart. Everybody can't be right. But we, I think, I think this is an opportunity actually. You see how people are being uh, uh, energized and and, and, and protesting and all that. But I think this is an opportunity for us to, to look at ourselves as a country and say, are we together, really? And are we holding our elected officials accountable to making sure that they're working together? Not just, hey, you're on your side, I win what I win, you win what you win. Because this is what is happening. This is what's happening. And God only knows where it's going. Denzel believes in sticking to core values dot 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 things that truly matter and don't change with time or trends. For him, it's all about looking at a person's character and actions rather than jumping on the bandwagon of popular opinions. He's a firm believer in truth and authenticity, even if it's not the most popular stance these days. As Hollywood, politics, and social media blend into one big echo chamber, Denzel stands out by continuing to speak his mind. He encourages people to think deeply, listen carefully, and avoid blindly following the crowd. He advocates for respectful and thoughtful conversations rather than divisive arguments. In many ways, Denzel acts like people used to when being real and honest mattered most. His words resonate with those who are feeling the weight of today's divided world. 